Good morning, church. I'm Reverend Nate Melcher, and welcome to worship as Richfield United Methodist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today, worship is live and in person at the Outdoors Bandshell. And yet here we are by phone and by streaming online with a special reprise of a past worship service, plus a few selected surprises along the way. Today's sermon explores the finale of Acts 2, the Pentecost story, when the disciples felt the Holy Spirit in their midst at the birth of the Christian church. We are standing on holy ground And I know that there are angels all around Let us praise Jesus now We are standing Good morning, church. Hi, friends. I'm Reverend Nate Melcher, and welcome to worship as Richfield United Methodist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Your church acknowledges that we gather on the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. The best of all is, God is with us. Welcome to one of three special online-only worship services this summer that bring together some musical favorites, perennial content, and an interwoven sermon that will explore the birth of the church through the Acts of the Apostles. Wherever you are today, and whenever today is for you, I hope you find this to be a time and place to connect with the Holy and know that others are connecting with the Holy as well. So position your body for comfort, do what you can to set the tone of your space, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, and may we gather in the Holy Spirit to partner with Jesus and praise our living God. Let's begin worship by safely lighting a candle or a lamp to celebrate God with us. We have conflex moments, these moments when our life's journey meets God's heart. Let us celebrate the light of the world as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we, your people, meet to offer praise and prayer, may we find in fuller measure what it is in Christ we share. Here as we Church and kingdom 
children come forward and you're here. Hi kids. This summer we have a scripture reading. It has three big questions. How is this possible? What does this mean? And what should we do? Let's look at that last one. What should we do? Have you ever been given tools to do something and then you asked, okay, what do I do now? What happened? Yeah? Well, one time uh, my, my mom told me to get uh, her a wrench, mm -hmm. and I didn't know which one that was. Oh. Would that be an example? Yeah, I think so. And even if you did have the wrench, you're like, what do I do with it now? Yeah. Sure. Okay. It might have been, actually, I might have been a screwdriver. Could be a screwdriver. There's a whole veritable cornucopia of tools in a tool chest. Cornucopia! Uh, is there something that you didn't know what to do when you were younger, and then when you got older, you really knew what to do because you understood more. How to use a protractor. How to use a protractor. Absolutely. Yes. Um, how, uh, how, um, how clouds work. How clouds work? I yeah. used to think they were like con candy, but now I know that they are like... Part of the water cycle? Yeah. Yeah. That thing. Do you, do you wish they were cotton candy? Kind of. Well... There's that. But I mean, there's no way I could eat them unless I stick my head out of an airplane window, and that wouldn't be a good idea. Well, they're working on the science. So, for the crowds in the scripture, they didn't really understand God was with them. And Simon Peter helped them understand it, and it made them so excited and so grateful. They said, Great, what do we do now? And he told them, Well, get out there and love people. Partner with God's Spirit and just love people. And they started the church. So, uh, can we love other people? Yes! Yeah. Yes, God we can. loves everyone, so yes. so do we! Now, let me ask you this. Is it always easy to love other people? No! No, it's way. not always easy, but it's always worth it. And God always loves us no matter what. Thank God. Let's pray. Holy One, you love us. You love all people. We're so grateful. Help us to share that love with as many people as we possibly can, safely and with love in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 May the peace of God be with you. Please share signs of peace. This scripture picks up from where we left off earlier this summer, when a gathered crowd of people from disparate places feel the Holy Spirit and they discover they can finally understand one another. Now the disciple Simon Peter has helped them understand it's the Holy Spirit in their midst. So now they ask, what do we do with this? Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all those who are far away. Everyone from the Lord our God calls, our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons at, were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and have, having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, Lord added to this number those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. All of these people are gathered together in one place. They're from all over the world with their own languages and cultures and traditions, yet together they feel the Holy Spirit. They didn't understand what was going on. They asked, how is it that we hear each other? In their perplexity, they asked this new question, what does this mean? And then Simon Peter raised his voice. He offered an explanation, citing scripture and prophecy and naming this special moment at the birth of the church as being born of the Holy Spirit. He quotes from the prophets Joel and the Psalms of David. He offers his own thoughts on it and says, recognize God in our midst and teaches them about Jesus. And guess what? 
They believe him. They trust him. They think he's right. Of course, this just leads to more questions. I gotta say, of all the people I know who want the Bible to answer questions, there sure are plenty of asked questions in the Bible. Finally, we come to this third question that people ask, what should we do? That is, my friends, a question for all of us. We face it all the time. We transition to a new season of life and we ask ourselves, what should we do? Retiring? What should we do? Fresh school year? What should we do? A new church program year? What should we do? We face it every day, really. Every morning is another opportunity to ask, what should we do as people, as neighbors, as beloved children of God, as servants of God? That's a big question because we might be confronted with a challenging choice, even if it's the right one. Do we have what it takes to do something with our faith? Do we have guts? <laughs> guts is a word people either like because they like feeling tough when they talk about guts, or they don't like it because guts is gross. But here's the thing. When the Holy Spirit is in your midst and you have new understanding of the world around you that makes you ask, how is it that we hear when you come to realize something holy is at work and you ask, what does this mean? When you come to realize that you can believe God put you on this earth to do something amazing, so you ask what we should do with our one wild and precious life, friends, that takes guts. When I read this story in the Acts of the Apostles, when I think about those first disciples, the first church, the first acts of Christian love. I am in love with how their hearts are on fire with the Holy Spirit, the awe and fear they have, the guts they have to go for it together. And I'm reminded of this word from ancient Greek, splachnon. Splachnon. Now to the ancients, splachnon is your belly. It's your insides where your strongest feelings reside. It is figuratively where you feel your tender affections, deep desires, your compassions. It's the seat of your being, which compels you to move from feeling your feelings to acting your actions. It is also literally your bowels, your intestines, your stomach, your inner, your guts. Like that Greek word pneuma, that means three things, the wind swirling around you, and the breath pulled deep inside you, and the spirit compelling you, this Greek word splachnon has a double meaning. When we have strong feelings, delight, anger, fear, awe, where do we feel them? In our guts, our bellies. We feel feelings physiologically. Of course, the ancients put our feelings there. For example, in Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 33, the Samaritan is moved with compassion. There's that splachnon word for the injured man on the road. In Zachary's prophecy of the birth of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 78, he says, by the tender mercy, again, splachnon, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. And in Acts the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 18, Judas Iscariot falls and bursts open in the middle and splachnon all of his guts, his bowels gushed out. Kind of gross. With Acts 2, this birth of the church at Pentecost, it's filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now splachnon doesn't appear as a written word in this text, yet it's vibe is visceral in this story. We know the images of tongues of fire dancing on their heads, their minds ablaze throughout the community with the rush of wind of the Spirit. Yet this community feels fire in the belly. The fire dances on their heads, and if indeed they're filled with the Holy Spirit, then that Spirit resides in their guts. Fire in the belly. Like a candle lit on top, the wick runs through the guts of it, ready to burn. 
This is how a community of believers goes through life, supporting each other, reaching out, keeping that flame lit and alive. They don't merely intellectualize it. Oh, I'll be nice because it's nice to be nice. Oh no, friends, they feel it. I am compelled from my innermost being to reach out to my neighbor. That is how faith in our guts inspires action in the world. As a group, as a church, they encounter disruption. They have a sense in that upper room, a sense of awe that teeters on fear because of all moments of awe that scrape against that line of fear. It's like being on a roller coaster and you're feeling excited and afraid, back and forth, up and down. When the crowd asks, how is it that we hear? They gain awareness of each other. When they ask, what does this mean? They gain empathy for one another. When they ask, what should we do? They are moving to compassion for one another. When they seek to know the fire in their bellies, they can light up the world. Now, Peter's response to what does this mean is to remind them of their history. His pressure on the prophet Joel says that this is what he said, and his midrash on the Psalms says this relates to them. Responding to that question, what should we do? Peter reminds them to step boldly into the future. That compelling feeling to do, that's how the Holy Spirit moves them and moves us from awareness to empathy, to compassion in order to exercise justice. Empathy is understanding another's feelings, even come to grips with their situation. You put yourself in their shoes. Compassion is when those feelings get churning into yearning to do the work, to heal the world, to act. And friends, over the past few years, I've had the privilege of getting to be with you with this church, to be with you during some of your biggest belly laughs and some of your messiest weeping. You ever been with someone who laughed so hard they weren't even themselves? Like, like the sound is just too high or loud or abrupt. They close their eyes, they whip their head back as if they're possessed by something from deep within. It's loud and it pulls at your abs and your rib cage. There's a reason they call it a belly laugh in your gut. You are a church who likes to laugh. You're compelled to take moments of joy-filled wonder and share it with others. Have you ever been with someone who cried so hard they weren't even themselves? The sound is guttural, wet, breathy, choking even, eyes whipping tears this way and that, as if possessed by something deep within. In deep crying, especially, the breath can stink of bile and gall. The wind strikes a part of the lungs less traveled and it barks up and if a hug is involved, it mixes with the sweat and tears soaking shirts and forearms. It's a cry from the gut. Friends, you're a church who holds each other when you cry, who takes in someone's fear of mystery and dwells in it together. The Holy Spirit, the fire in your belly, fills you with compassion for each other and compels you to act in Jesus' mission of justice and mercy. Do you have fire in your belly? Do you have guts? Friends, I can't name your passion for you. I do know that as a church, we have been prayerfully discerning our next steps together. We have, as a church, decided to invest our compassion in ministries for the next season. Each one of us must take our responsibility to feel the Spirit deep in our guts and fan those flames for these ministries. When we welcome new refugee neighbors, help people find stable housing, be a hub for servant volunteers to improve this city, create ways for people to be community, we are living out our compassion. I hope you're excited, though I cannot tell you how much compassion to have. I don't live in your belly. I'm not the fire in your belly. I don't churn your splat non. The Holy Spirit does that. 
Repent of willful ignorance and comfort. Be baptized by the fire in your belly that threatens to spill out and splash all over this broken world like a healing salve bringing new life. This fall, do what church has always done. Listen for the Holy Spirit. Stand in awe and wonder. Ask, what does this mean? Feel the fire in the gut. Ask what we should do and do it. It is a time to put faith into action. Friends, if there's one thing I know about this church, we are a church with guts. We all have times when we ignore the Holy Spirit. I do it, you do it. Humans are messy like that. But God doesn't need more fire extinguishers. God needs more fire tenders. That's our job. Next time you feel an upset stomach or upset guts, don't reach for the Pepto-Bismol. Reach for the gospel to share it. Reach for the voting lever and make change. Phone to call your elected official. Reach for the pen to write the new policy. The keyboard to sign up for the email list. The seat at the community ed class. The placard to march. And when your body won't let you do it anymore, reach for the checkbook to fuel a young person who can. Reach for the world around you and reach out with the Holy Spirit. The fire in your belly, let it burst forth. Put your guts to work. The fire of the Holy Spirit is a renewable resource. Burning fossil fuel stinks, but the Spirit is refreshing. It doesn't burn coming up. It's eternal and active. I'm proud to be the pastor of a church with guts. So let's use them for Jesus. That's what we should do. May it be so, and amen. Friends, the gifts that God gives us are a reflection of God's love for the world, and those gifts come in many forms. We give back to the abundance of God in order that we might play a role in fulfilling God's dream of faith, justice, and joy ringing throughout the land. Now, your financial gift today, it supports the ministry, the outreach, and the operations of your church. As always, thank you for your generosity in all of its forms. You can go online right now at richfieldumc.org slash give and be a part of this. Thank you so much. Please join us in the breakthrough prayer. Loving God of all, renew our hearts and minds, reveal your wildest dreams, break through to each of us. Unite us in your vision, equip us for your work, transform us by your song, create our harmony. May we embrace your future and be a loving church. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping as Richfield United Methodist Church today. I hope you had a good experience. Peace and God's blessings to you. Now go with God who creates something new in you every day. Go with Jesus who is at the heart of reconciliation. And go with the Holy Spirit, God's source of comfort and strength throughout all of creation. And until we meet again, let's say it together. Let us live in faith, justice, and joy. Amen. All right, here's an old chestnut. Please sing along. You probably know the words. Sing, sing a song. Sing out loud, sing out strong. Sing of good things and not bad. Sing of a happy, not sad. Sing, sing a song. Make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry if it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Sing, sing a Let's hear Kermit sing this. Sing, sing a song. Sing out loud. Sing out strong. Sing of good things, not bad. Sing of happy, not sad. Sing a song, make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry if it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Sing, sing a song. Here's a part you all know. La 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 da 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 la da 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 la 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 la. La la di da 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 la da 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 la 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 la. Let me hear you. La 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 da 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 la da 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 la 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 la. La 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 da 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 la 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 la. Sing a song. Yeah. Thank you. Worship as Richfield United Methodist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. There are three special worship series this summer. Here's one of them. Best Supporting Actor is an online-only worship series on the Memorial Day, Independence Day, and Labor Day holiday weekends at youtube.com slash richfieldumc. Worship online and share God's love wherever you are on your summer holiday weekends. Let's ask big questions, put our faith into action, and love God and neighbor all summer long. Subscribe, share, and we'll see you there.